What's up, y'all? It's Ass Sports Kid here with my 2023 Tennessee Volunteers season predictions. Let's get into it. Last year, Tennessee recorded an 11 and 2 record. Very, very good season. Only losses to Georgia and South Carolina on the road. Undefeated at home. Nine and a half is their current over under for win total this upcoming season. So back to nine, 10 wins. Slight decline, but still very good. There are a lot of returning starters, five on offense and seven on defense, and five players were drafted from Tennessee. Five on offense is a little bit low. They lost a lot of receivers. The recruiting rankings were very good. 11th for recruiting and 37th for transfer ranking. They brought in one five-star, Nico Lamal... La Lamaleva, Nico Lamaleva, Lamaleva. He is the number one quarterback, number two, wow, wow, number two quarterback in this recruiting class behind Georgia's quarterback they signed, number two player nationally, and the number one player from California. He is currently going to be the backup. I expect a lot from him in the future. As long as he's not a bust, he's going to be really good. There were also 10 four-stars and 14 three-stars, including David Hobbs, um, defensive lineman from North Carolina, number one D-lineman in the country. No, that's wrong. Number one D-lineman from... I'm one player from North Carolina. What am I saying? Uh, number four D-lineman in the country and a top, top 50 uh, player in the country. Ranking, he's a really high four-star. He could probably be pushed up a little bit and get that five-star rating. It's also Cameron Selden playing receiver from Virginia. Number one player from Virginia. Number three receiver in the class and a top 100 player in the country. Transfer class was pretty good. Four four-stars and three three-stars. One two-star, but is a kicker. He's a kicker. And five of those total players will be starters including Dante Thornton Jr. Plays receiver, and he's transferring in from Oregon. Should be pretty good. They need those receiver transfers, or at least some guys to step up. They also brought in Keenan Phil, playing linebacker, transferring in from Brigham Young. Should start. Personal ratings for this team. Giving them a 9 out of 10 on offense would be probably a 10 out of 10 if their receiving room was better. Um, their uh, offensive line has 93 career starts, which is pretty good. Um, I think they're all relatively young. They're all There's one senior, four juniors. It'll be better next year. Running back room is going to be pretty good. One of the most underrated, probably one of the most underrated running back rooms in the uh, SEC. And then the defense should be pretty good, solid overall, giving them an 8 out of 10. Here's a schedule. This is the important part of these videos. In A, that's your schedule difficulty. A, top 25 schedule in the country. They start out with their with two out of conference games against Virginia and Austin P. Then they play one conference game at Florida before they come back home to play UTSA. Then they stay at home for two weeks and play two more conference games before going on the road for two weeks in a row to play conference games. Then they play UConn toward the end of the season before finishing out against Missouri, Georgia, and Vandy. Week one against UVA in Nashville. Very strange. I don't know why they're playing this game on a neutral site. Very strange. Anyway, in Nashville, Virginia is setting themselves up to be one of the worst teams in the ACC. They are dreadful. They were bad last year. They didn't finish the season last year because some terribly terrible stuff happened. Um... But I don't think they're going to be very good, and Tennessee should blow the doors off them. 
Next is Austin P, who is an FCS school. They are not very good even at the FCS level. So this is a, this is definitely a show up, take your loss, take your money sort of game. Then we hit conference play against Florida on the road. I think it'll be a close win. Um, this game has been the history of this game has been relatively good recently at least um recently as in last year other years it's mostly been blowouts in florida's favor um but i do think tennessee could start their own little winning streak against florida billy napier i don't know about him i don't know if florida is gonna win seven games maybe they might win six games um I think Florida should should beat them. Should be a compet Florida should be a competitive team, but I don't think they're going to be that good. Next is UTSA. UTSA, my favorite team in the American Conference. Um, they've been very good recently, very good. They're like two losses, maybe three in the last three years. They've been very good, um, but I do think Tennessee should beat them pretty solidly sad to say but uh the Vols should get another win here now we hit conference play for the rest well oh we do have UConn okay besides for UConn we hit conference play for the rest of the season South Carolina as an SEC East team they're fighting to be one of the better teams in the SEC East but um they aren't super great they do have to travel to Knoxville. Head to Neyland. Neyland, pretty difficult place to play. Um, South Carolina, two videos ago, two or three videos ago, was two or three days ago, two or three videos ago, was the uh, South Car my South Carolina video season preview. Their defense is not going to be good. And that doesn't set them up very well to play Tennessee, who is a very high-scoring offense. Next is Texas A&M, who my team, my team, I'm very excited about this game. We played in 2020 as um, Tennessee's last game of the season. We were ranked top five. We had to into the playoffs. And that's not what this video is about. I think this should be a very good game. Tennessee has home field advantage, and they're also coming off of a bye week. I'm going to say it's a toss-up, because I believe in my Aggies. I'll be at this game on the road. I'll probably be singing Rocky Top 2. I say it's a toss-up. Got me a little bit nervous right now. A little bit nervous right now. Next is Bama. Bama on the road. Bama is going for blood. Bama wants blood. Um, after the upset last year, 52 to 49. They're never going to forgive Tennessee. They're going to go on like a 50 year in game winning streak now. Um, I'd like to say Tennessee is going to be competitive. And they might be. But uh, Bama is going to pull off some Bama magic and probably win this game honestly next we have good old kentucky kentucky they're all right they've been pretty mid they had will levis recently who is probably an underrated nfl quarterback um but kentucky also has home field advantage in this game and they're coming off of a bye week so i'll say it's going to be a bit of a toss-up this game is sort of a rivalry actually if you're still watching and you're a volunteer fan or a wildcat fan that somehow ended up here um let me know in the comments is this a real rivalry is there hate or is it like a regional thing that uh you're regional you it's a rivalry now or let me know let me know um i think tennessee or my bad i think kentucky has a lot going for them in this game and they can keep it close um they didn't keep it close last year is quite embarrassing they did the year before um Tennessee won in 2020. Historically, Tennessee has won the vast majority of these games. I looked at the Wikipedia page and it was like a 30, 25 year 
slash game winning streak for Tennessee at one point from like 1985 to 2010. That was wacky. If it's a rivalry, it wasn't very competitive for a while. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to keep it as a toss-up. Next up is UConn. UConn is rising. They are getting better. Sort of. Kind of. My cur Currently, they're my favorite independent team. I'd, either way. Either way. Um, Tennessee is not even going to give them a chance in this game. They're bad, honestly. Compared to every SEC team, UConn is bad. Uh, Tennessee should just blow the doors off them. Next is Missouri. Oh, good old Missouri. On the road, I don't think it's going to matter too, too much. Missouri is not going to be great. They might go to a bowl game. They might. Um, they are also probably the second worst team, maybe even the worst team in the, uh, in the conference. Could probably be put in the big win category, but I wanted to keep it in the close win category. It's on the road. And Missouri kept it close against Georgia last year. That's what they're going to be remembered for forever now. Keeping it close, not even winning. Next game is Georgia. Good old Uga. This year it's on the on not on the road, at home. On the road for the Bulldogs. Last year it was a terrible game between the hedges. Um, terrible for Tennessee, I think. And if it was at a neutral side, I think Tennessee would have won. This year, Tennessee has home field advantage, and this is Georgia's most difficult game of the season, probably. It's either this or them or Ole Miss. Um, Georgia's most difficult game. Georgia goes on the road to play Neyland. I think it's going to be a close loss for the Vols. But if it happens... And Georgia's like a top five team, then back to back years against top teams, the, the two top two SEC teams, and they've toppled, it'd be a miracle. Um, but currently, the two best SEC teams are the two in the close loss category. Finally, we have good old Vandy. Um, if you're a Tennessee fan and you're still here, let me know what you think about Vandy. Is this like, is this a real rivalry in football? Is it a real football rivalry? Or is there such a long winning streak that it doesn't even matter? Do you even care about Vanderbilt? Does it matter? I don't, I don't know. I don't think Vandy is that good. They're probably the, the worst team in the conference. As usual, good old Vandy. Um, it's just a real rivalry. Rivalry, though. I don't. I don't quite know. I'm gonna say it's a close win for the Vols. Close win means like within 17 points, between like three and 17. Um, Vandy not great, but they are coming off of a bye week. I'll give them that. So uh, that's the end of the regular season, at least. For Tennessee, my projected record is going to be nine and three. Let me show you how I got there. We have four wins over UVA, Austin P, UTSA, and UConn. Four more wins over Florida, South Carolina, Missouri, and Vandy for eight total wins. And then I think they win one of these two toss-up games. I'd like to say they lose to AM, but I think they have a good shot in that game. Um, I think they win one of these. They might win two and go to 10 and two. I could see that. I could see them pulling off another upset against Bama or Georgia for 10 wins. They could, they could hit 10 and two or 11 and one. And it would be another really good season. I don't quite know how Joe Milton's going to do as the starting quarterback. We'll have to see really. I think at worst, probably eight and four, and at best, ten and two. Now nah, at best, eleven and one. Let me know what you think about this Tennessee Volunteers team down in the comments below. I'm pretty high on them. They're probably gonna stay as good or a little bit better than they were last year. Um, yeah. 
thank you so much for watching make sure to like comment subscribe share whatever and until the next one peace